¡Ey! ¿Qué pasa, chavales? ¿Todo bien? ¿Todo correcto? Y yo que me alegro. No mola esto de copiar a los demás, ¿verdad? Hola a todos, soy Javier Poveda y esto es de Bien TV, el canal en el que te vas a pasar... Uh, 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 madre mía, de bien, mientras aprendes geografía, historia, historia del arte y un poquito este año de economía y de empresariales. Este vídeo va dirigido a mis alumnos de cuarto de la ESO de sección del CEIPSO, el Encinar de Torrelodones. In this video we're going to take a look at the third part of the unit 3, following the presentation you have already uploaded to the virtual classroom. So, let's go. Madre mía, la magia. So here we are, the last part of the unit 3, and this part is the history of Spain uh, in the 19th century, the reigns of Fernando VII and Fernando, Fernando VII and Isabel II of Spain. Let's start. So this is Spain in the 19th century, the most part of the 19th century. Here you have the timeline. We are going to study the reigns of Fernando VII, Isabel II, and the democratic sexenium, el sexenio democrático, which is divided in the provisional government, the reign of Amadeo I, and the first Spanish Republic, la Primera República Española. So let's start with the reign of Fernando VII from. Uh, 1814 to 1833. So after the defeat of Napoleon in the Spanish War of Independence, Joseph I, Jose I, was forced to leave Spain, of course, and Fernando VII returned. And traditionally, in the Spanish historiography, the, his reign has been divided in three phases or three parts. El sexenio absolutista, el trienio liberal y la década ominosa. First, el sexenio absolutista from 1814 to 1820. The Cádiz Cortes hoped he would uphold Fernando VII the constitution of 1812. Great mistake. Because uh, the absolutists, they wrote a manifesto which is called the Persian Manifesto, el manifiesto de los persas, in which they asked Fernando VII to return to the absolutism, to the to the absolute monarchy, and to throw to the trash can the constitution of 1812, which he did. So, in uh, these six years, Fernando VII dismissed the Cortes, abolished the constitution, and restored the absolute monarchy. This period ended after the coup led by Rafael de Riego, which we have studied already in the bourgeois revolutions in the uh, last video or in the previous video, in 1820. So, Fernando VII, well, this coup was successful and Fernando VII, Fernando, Fernando VII was forced to reinstate the constitution of 1812 and to guarantee the freedoms that had been suppressed during the previous phase. But this uh, period only lasted for three years. That is why it's called El Trino Liberal, from 1820 to 1820. Uh, 23. Why? Because in 1823, Fernando, Se Fernando Septimo asks the Holy Alliance, do you remember the Holy Alliance that was established after the Congress of Vienna, for assistance? So they commissioned the French to um, restore the absolutism in, in Spain. So they sent an army, which is called the 100,000 Sons of San Luis, los 100,000 hijos de San Luis, at the command of the Duke, the Duke of Angoulême in English, el Duque de Angulema in, in Spanish, and they defeated the liberals. So Fernando, Fernando VII reestablished the absolute monarchy and persecuted the liberals. And this is called la década ominosa. Ominosa means desastrosa, horrible, infame. From 1823 to 1833, until his death. This is Fernando VII, which was ugly as, uh, well, he was very ugly, I don't want to say that word. This is El Manifiesto de los Persas, it's a very recommended reading. This is Rafael de Riego, the one, the guy who revolted. He was the commander of the troops that were sent to the to the South America in order to defeat the the independence, uh, well, the liberators, no, the rebellions that aimed to the independence for 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 the independence of Latin America. And this is the Los Cien Mil Hijos de San Luis uh, entering Spain and defeating the liberals. 
So at the end of his reign, Fernando VII proclaimed the Pragmatic Sanction, la Pragmatica Sanción, which replaced the Salic Law, la Ley Salica, which had been in place since Felipe V, since the reign of Felipe V, and which excluded females from the line of succession. Why did Fernando VII do this? Because he only had one child, he only had one daughter which will be Isabel II. So, in order to uh, his daughter to succeed him in the throne, he proclaimed this sanction. And this angered a lot his brother, which is Carlos Maria Isidro, because if uh, without the pragmatic sanction, he would have been the next king of Spain. But Fernando VII didn't want this, well, his wife didn't want this, and he proclaimed this. This will be a problem because the followers of Carlos Maria Isidro will, will not accept this situation and this will be the beginning of the Carlist War that uh, happened, the Three Carlists War that happened in Spain or that occurred in Spain during the 19th century. 19th century. <coughs> so, after Fernando VII, uh, the reign of Isabel II starts from 1833 to 1868. Isabel II ended absolutism and established a liberal constitutional monarchy with these features. She established this because he had, she had no choice, because the ones who, because the absolutists supported the brother of Fernando VII, and so she had to ally with the liberals. So the features of her monarchy were the following. The crown retained power, but shared with the Cortes, which the crown could call and dissolve. So the power was shared. This is very important, and this is called shared sovereignty. The Queen was supported by the liberal political parties, why? Against the Carlists, which were, which were supported by the absolutists. And the, the, the two main parties of the liberals were the moderates and the progressives, los moderados y los progresistas. However, Isabel favored the first one, the moderates. Various constitutions were approved, mainly two of them, a progressive constitution in 18. 37 after uh, the coup of los sargentos de la granja and a moderate constitution in 1845 both of them were um, established on limited male suffrage that uh, was um, on hold up during all the isabel the reign of isabel II, and the military participated actively in politics as head of governments and ministers this was also an endemic problem in the 19th century in spain the um, the military or, or the generals were usually the prime ministers of the or the presidents of the council of ministers del consejo de ministros this is isabel segunda Isabel, when she was uh, a child. I think this is when she had uh, two years, when she was two years old. She was still pretty. Later you will see that this changed. So since Isabel II was a child, there had to be a, um, a regent, There was a, the, which is called the regency period. A regent is the one who holds the power until the, the real monarch comes to age. So, the Regency period during the reign of Isabel II um, started in 1833, after the death of Fernando VII, and ended in 1843. There were, there were two regents. The first, one, the first one, her mother, which was Maria Cristina de Borbón, from 1833 to 1840. Later, it was General, well, General Espartero, from 1840 to 1843, which, who was a progressive. The main problem that this uh, Regency period uh, suffered was the First Carlist War from 1833 to 1839. And it took place because Carlos Maria Isidro, the, um, the brother of Fernando VII, claimed the throne and did not accept the pragmatic sanction or Isabel II as the, um, the queen. He was supported by the absolutists and by those who supported the fueros. Fueros are privileges that some regions had um, had in uh, in Spain, mostly um, uh, how do you say this? Uh, fi financial privileges. The church, 
the regions of Navarra, Vascongadas, and parts of Aragón and Catalonia, the north of Catalonia and the south of Aragón, lo que hoy es el maestrazgo. And the liberals supported Isabel II in exchange for the government becoming more liberal. That is what that is why she had to ally with the liberals. The war ended with a victory of the liberals and uh, ended with the Convention of Vergara, also called El Abrazo de Vergara. In 1839, in this treaty, Isabel was recognized as the Queen of Spain and she agreed in exchange to respect the fueros of Navarra and Vascongadas. This was accepted but by most of the Carlist army, but Carlos, the claimant, did not accept this and uh, his son continued the fight in the, in the next war for his right to the Spanish crown. This is Tomás de Zumalacarri, which was one of the most important generals of the Carlist army. This is Maria Cristina de Borbón and Baldomero Espartero, which were the two, the two regents of, uh, during the uh, minority of Isabel II. Have you ever heard the expression Tienen los cojones más grandes que el caballo espartero? This is the reason. This is a sculpture which is in uh, Paseo de la Castellana, if I am correct, in Madrid. This is the first Carlist war. The Carlists were very close to winning the, to win the, this war by this expedition, the expedition of Carlos VI, which was very close to Madrid. They stopped in Arganda and nobody knows why they stopped, but he did and he uh, eventually lost the war. This is El Abrazo de Vergara between Espartero, the general from the Liberals, and or the Liberal General, and Maroto, the Carlist General. These two of them. And this marks the peace between Carlists and Liberals. After that, in 1843, Isabel II reached the age of majority. Well, he, she was proclaimed as, uh, as an adult with only 13 years old, which is curious. What were the most important features of her reign? The alteration in power between the moderates and the progressives usually led by a military figure, as we have said before. For example, Espartero, the generals Espartero, Narvaez, which is this one, El Espadón de Loja, and O'Donnell. All of them have streets in Madrid after them. The Second Carlist War from 1846 to 1849. This war was caused by Isabel II, the refusal of Isabel II to marry Carlos Luis Bourbon, Bourbon, which was the son of Carlos Maria Isidro, the next claimant of the Carlist cause. And the war ended with the defeat of the Carlists again. The Carlists never won neither of the three Carlist wars. Then some important uh, events were the creation of the Guardia Civil in 1844, El Duque de Ahumada, to maintain the order in rural areas, as well as today, and the railway law. This We will um, get into this more deeply when we study the Industrial Revolution, but this railway law of 1855 was very important for the improvement of the railway network in Spain. And the, maybe the most important economic feature were the expropriations, las desamortizaciones, that aim to solve Spain's economic problems by what is an expropriation, paying the state debt and, well, they, um, break, they broke up large states, which are called los latifundios, belonging to the church, the nobility and the municipalities that were unproductive lo que se conoce como en manos muertas, and did not pay tax. So the state took it and paid a price for it. They took it, they forced them to give those, uh, those estates to the, to, the, to the state. It is not the same estate that state. And they were forced to give these estates, this land, to the state so the state could then could later auction them subastarlas what were the most important ones the expropriation or las desamortizaciones de mendizábal the uh, from uh, well in the years 1836 and 37 and la desamortización de madoz in 1855 the first one the states of the church and the second one the madoz one 
de states of the municipalities, las propiedades de la iglesia y de los ayuntamientos. So, they wanted to sell these properties in order to pay the Spanish debt. This was not very successful, but they did it. This is La Guardia Civil, when it was created in the 19th century, they weren't dressed up in green. This is the railway network of Spain, the first two railways, uh, railway lines uh, that were created in Spain was, were this one from Barcelona to Mataró and from Madrid to Aranjuez. Later, the, after the, the railway law in um, 1855, this developed a lot. And these are Mendizábal and Madoz. They were ministers of the of economy. Well, ministro de Hacienda. The ones who um, made the expropriation, las desamortizaciones. At the end of the reign of Isabel II, uh, there was a crisis because her public image was damaged by a number of political problems. They were the manipulation of the election results, which is called el caciquismo, los pucherazos, the emergence of new political parties who opposed the monarchy, mainly the Democrats, so they be, who believed in universal manhood suffrage. Remember that during all the reign of Isabel II, the um, suffrage was limited, and the republicans who wanted Spain to become a republic. In the last years of Isabel II reign, also there was also a major a major economic crisis, and both this uh, political and economic crisis led to an extensive social unrest that led to the revolution we are going to see now. Well, these are uh, some examples of el caciquismo, the manipulation of the um, electoral outcomes, and I suggest you to read them because they are very funny. So, the reign of Isabel II ended with the democratic sexenium, no, el sexenio democrático, democrático, el sexenio democrático, from 1868 to 1874. So, uh, in this year, in 1868, a military revolt began in Cádiz, led by Admiral Topete, Juan Bautista Topete, and the generals Juan Prim and Francisco Serrano. And this uprising was called the Glorious Revolution, no, la Revolución Gloriosa, and it was successful and forced Isabel II to exile. He was, she was exiled with his family, with her family, in the, in the United Kingdom. So, a provisional government was established, this is a summary, a provisional government was established, this, a new political period began known as Sexenio Democrático, and this can be divided in three phases, El, um, the provisional government, the reign of Amadeo I, and the first Spanish Republic. Let's see their details. These are Prim, Serrano, y Topete. Very handsome, the three of them. The first stage of the Sexenio Democrático is the provisional government. So, a provisional government was established, it was led by Serrano and Prim, and they called Constituent Cortes to, in order to write a new constitution. And this constitution will be a constitutional, uh, will establish a constitutional monarchy. So, they looked for a new king for Spain. This king, of course, shouldn't be a, Bur a Bourbon, a Bourbon. Okay, so they look in the royal families of Europe. Well, this constitution is the constitution of 1869, and it was, it's one of the, it's the best constitution of the 19th century. It's the most democratic constitution because it introduced universal manhood suffrage, the freedom of religion, and guaranteed a range of rights and freedoms, a newly and more wider uh, range of rights and freedoms, and also a constitutional monarchy. So they looked for a king and they finally chose Amadeo I of Savoy, Amadeo I de Savoya, which was the son of Victor Manuel II, which is the king of uh, Italy that we have studied in the previous video. So uh, he ruled from 1871 to 1873. Uh, he was named Amadeo I of Spain. During his reign, the third and final Carlist War started in 1872 uh, until 1876, 
because the provisional government, there was a candidate which was uh, Carlos VII, the grandson of Carlos Maria Isidro, and they, of course, they did not choose the, him as a king. So they revolted again and there was the, this third war. That the problems were so important that Amadeo I had to, well, he abdicated, he refused to the throne two years later because he had opposition, the, the opposition from the Carlists, from the Republicans and also from the Bourbon supporters, which were uh, the supporters of Alfonso, the son, the later Alfonso XII, which was the son of Isabel II. Here you have Prim Serrano Itopete auctioning the throne of Spain. This is a caricature very, very funny, very famous. Amadeo I de Saboya and Carlos VII, which was the this time the Carlist claimant to the throne in the Third Carlist War. And after the resign of uh, Amadeo I, they, the Cortes established the, or proclaimed the First Spanish Republic, which will, on, will only last more a bit more than one year. Uh, why the, the, this First Republic lasted so or was so short? Because they faced a lot of problems. First, the continuation of the Third Carlist War, which will not end until 1876. Then, the Cantonal Rebellion. Be careful with this, uh, this slide of the First Spanish Republic because I added, um, I rewrote or and I added um, parts that are not in the textbook. The Cantonal Rebellion were revolts, were federal revolts in mostly in Andalucía, Levante and Murcia and particularly in Cartagena which was the most powerful canton and they demanded the creation of a federal republic. They were defeated um, later in the next year in 1874 but this was mostly the most important problems problem of the Republic. Then also in the year 1878, the Ten Years War in Cuba uh, had, um, had started but, and it became also a problem, um, a major problem in the First Spanish Republic because the, these Cuban rebels wanted the independence of the island. <coughs> Sorry, they, they eventually will not get it until uh, 1898. We will study that. And finally, the divisions among the Republicans, because some Republicans wanted a federal republic and others a, the, a centralized or unitary one. And this uh, caused all of these four problems, uh, among others, caused so much political instability in the Republic. So there were several presidents of this Republic. If there are in one year, there were four presidents. Stanislao Figueras, Francisco Pi Margal, eh, Nicolás Salmerón and Emilio Castelar. In this order, Figueras, Pi Margal, Salmerón uh, uh, and Castelar. And the Republicans were working on a new federal constitution uh, that, uh, fortunately, they, it was not uh, approved. But this, the Republic stopped, this federal government of the Republic stopped after a coup led by General Pavia, who dissolved the Cortes in January 1874, the 3rd of January. And he established a unitary Republic with the dictatorship of General Serrano. It is what it is, la dictadura unitaria o la dictadura republicana del general Serrano, que duró casi todo el año de 1874. After that, in December the 29th, if I remember, remember recall correctly, of, well, in December of 1874, there was another military coup in Sagunto, led by, Sagunto Valencia, led by el general Martinez Campos, and he restored the monarchy and ended the First Republic. And he restored the monarchy in the person of, or under, Alfonso XII, which was the son of Isabel II. So with this, the First Republic ended, and of course, el sexenio democrático ended. And a new period started, which is the restoration, or la, la restauración borbónica, the borbonic restoration, supongo que se dirá, that we will study, and we will study that in the following units. This is the Cantonal Rebellion, and the most um, important area was the south and the southeast of Spain, particularly this, El Cantón de Cartagena, was very belligerent. 
This is a caricature of the division amongst federal and Unitarian Republicans in Spain. These were the four presidents of the First Republic, Figueras, Pimargal, Salmeron and Castelar. Do you need to know the dates? No, but you need to know the order. First Figueras, sec Figueras. second Pimargal, third Salmeron and fourth and the final president Emilio Castelar. This is the coup of General Pavias and General Pavia and these are the soldiers entering the Cortes on the, th on the, the 3rd of January of 1874. There is a legend that says that Pavia entered the Cortes riding his horse. This is bullshit, uh, this is a lie, this is uh, fa fake news. Okay, this is a legend. He was on the outside. He never entered the Cortes riding a horse. This is Isabel II in exile with Alfonso XII. Okay, Alfonso XII, more or less, he's handsome, but look at this. Ooh, this Isabel II, she was ugly, poof, very ugly. This is Alfonso XII entering Madrid after Martinez, the coup of Martinez Campos in 1875. And lastly, we are going to end this unit with the Latin American independence. After, uh, well, the Spanish Empire, independence of the Spanish Empire, most of the Spanish Empire. During the Spanish War of Independence, the process that led to the independence of Spain's American colonies began. It began in 1810. Various factors led to these revolutionary movements. For example, the influence of Enlightenment ideas, we know already about them. The American and the French revolutions, which were examples for, for these people, for the population of the, the Creoles. And these Creole bourgeoisie, los criollos, that were the white people, the, the descendants of the colonists, of the first colonists, the first Spanish colonists, white people, who wanted political and economic control of the colonies. So these movements, there were a lot of movements during this, this period from 1810 to 1824. Um, and they began during the Spanish War of Independence and the most important ones we only need to know the, the three protagonists and where did they operate. In the Vice Royalty of New Spain, El Virreinato de la Nueva España, que es México, a priest called Hidalgo, El Cura Hidalgo, in the Vice Royalty of New Granada, El Virreinato de la Nueva Granada, eh, Simón Bolívar, and in the Vice Royalty of the Rio de la Plata, El Virreinato del, del Rio de la Plata, the south of uh, America. This is um, el, bueno, uh, gen el General José de San Martín. More or less, this area is the, the Vice Royalty of El Río de la Plata. This area is the Vice Royalty of New Granada. This is the Vice Royalty of the Perú. And this is the Vice Royalty of New Spain, Nueva España. And, um, well, the last independence movement and or the last main battle ended after the Battle of Ayacucho, which is in Peru, in 1824. But the last Spanish troops resisted until 1826, mainly in Peru and in Chile. And during this period, we are not going to get into it very deeply, all or almost all of the colonies in Spain, so in America, all the Spanish colonies in America gained their independence. Okay, the only ones who didn't gain their independence in America were Cuba, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, which is here. Okay, they gained it after the Spanish-American War in 1898. We also keep the control. Uh, well, we also kept the control of the Philippines, but these are in Asia, in the Pacific. El cura Hidalgo, Simón Bolívar and José de San Martín. Very handsome. This is the capitulación of Ayacucho, o bueno, la capitulación de Ayacucho, the surrender of Ayacucho. And that's, uh, that's all of it for this unit. Lastly, as, as you know, I love art. So the main um, artistic movement in the first half of the, um, the 19th century was the Romanticism, el Romanticismo. And uh, do we need to know this? Well, we need to know the name. That Romanticism was the main artistic uh, period or movement in the first half of the 19th century. And these are same uh, various examples. 
in architecture, the Westminster Palace in London, the Hungarian Parliament in Budapest, they tried to, to reinvent the classical artistic uh, movements. For example, this is neo-Gothic and this is neo-Gothic and we will see neo-Romanic or neo-Hindi or neo a lot of neos. This is, this is neo-Baroque, for example, the Palais Garnier in Paris, in Paris which is the, the Opera of Paris. This is Neo-Egyptian. This is an Egyptian temple in the Antwerp Zoo in Belgium, which is very, very interesting. This is the Royal Pavilion in Brighton, which tries to imitate the Hindu architecture, very beautiful. And in painting, we have these master uh, artworks, such as Le Gado de la Meduse, uh, from uh, Jerry Colt, in Spanish, La Balsa de la Medusa, La Liberté Guidant le Peuple, de, de, de La Croix. Uh, they, this, uh, this is uh, featuring the, um, the revolution of 1830 in France. Remember the one who established um, Louis Philippe I of Orleans in the throne. La Mort de Sardanapale, o como se diga, La Muerte de Sardanapalo, de De La Croix. Look, it's very, it's very funny. The Highway, El Carro de No de John Constable, Rain, Steam and Speed, Luz, Vapor y Velocidad, the, from uh, William Turner, they were English. Este cuadro es, es fantástico. Uh, the Wonder Uber de Nevermere, El Caminante sobre un Mar de Nubes, very famous painting from Caspar David Friedrich, German. And we have also some examples of Spanish Romanticism. For example, this is La Plaza de Toro de las Ventas, which is Neo Mudejar. And also we have this is well this is this is part of the Spanish Romanticism, yes chronologically, but this is more a history painting. El fusilamiento de Torrijos y sus compañeros en las playas de Málaga, a wonderful painting, and this features the the shooting of Torrijos, which was um, a military who revolted against Fernando VII in 1831 during the ominous decade de Antonio Gisbert. And with this we end this presentation. Oh my god, 32 minutazos, Dios. Esto es todo por esta parte. Ya os dije que esta tercera parte era la más potente, pero claro, nos meten en una unidad, pues eh, todo el siglo XIX español, pues, pues es lo que hay. Como siempre voy a finalizar mis vídeos con una cita histórica. En este caso, viva España con honra. Era el lema de los revolucionarios de la, la Revolución Gloriosa, lo mejor que la pasó España en el 19, la Gloriosa, lástima que durase tan poco, y el manifiesto con el que, que se leyó en Cádiz cuando el almirante Topete sublevó a la escuadra, terminaba con esta frase fantástica que es Viva España, pero no viva España cualquiera, sino con honra. Maravilloso. Muchas gracias por ver el vídeo, espero que os haya ayudado y nos vemos en el próximo.